somebody tell you that, uh, you know, it's corporations and businesses that create jobs? Then explain something to me, Hillary. If corporations and businesses don't create jobs, then why is it that every Friday I get a paycheck that has right across the top of it a business's name, a corporation's name, right across the top of the paycheck? How the hell does that happen, Hill? I would remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Genius, Travis Cook, back with you once again. And there you heard Hillary Clinton with uh, the top of the program with one of the more offensive things she's ever said. Offensive even by her standards. I mean, uh, I, I noticed something about this. This seems to be, in terms of rhetoric, even further to the left than what we are used to hearing out of her uh, over the last 20 years. I mean, the whole the whole deal with the Clinton mystique, if you will, whether it's, uh, whether it's uh, you know, Bill the Flander or uh, Hillary the uh, Feminist, the, the whole mystique behind them has always been that they can take liberal ideas and make them sound like centrist ideas. That they can make them palatable to middle America. Well, that little statement there that she just put out there certainly does not seem uh, to be something that would be palatable to, the, to mainstream America. It kind of goes against what the Clintons usually do. So why did we hear this kind of statement out of Hillary Clinton? I have no doubt she actually believes it. I mean, she's a follower of Saul Alinsky, for crying out loud. You follow her academic work, you follow her career, you see that this is not a surprise, but she usually doesn't come out and say it. So why is she saying it now? Well, I think there's an interesting reason behind this. You see, Barack Obama, no doubt, is a very unpopular man in politics. We all know that. But as I've cautioned you on many times on this show before, all those kids that voted for Barack Obama, all those young people that voted for him in the last few elections, yes, they're disappointed in him, but they're not disappointed in him because they've lost faith in what he stood for. They're disappointed in him because, in their minds, he didn't execute the way they thought he should have. He didn't come through with these grandiose promises about government taking care of everybody the way that he promised he would. So there's still a lot of that a particular factor out there among the young people. Well, among those young people, among those young minds full of mush, particularly in the internet, there's been someone come along recently who's kind of become their champion. It's this chick from the Northeast named Elizabeth Warren. Now, we've talked about Elizabeth Warren on this show before. She is the closest thing to an actual card-carrying communist I've seen in American politics, except maybe for Bernie Sanders, in a long, long time. And she's gaining some traction with a lot of these young heads full of mush. Now, we went through a few weeks back on this show and point by point refuted the asinine ideas that Elizabeth Warren has. But there's no doubt that she is picking up some degree of traction in the Democratic movement. So much so that some people are talking about her as a potential presidential candidate in 2016. Well, that, of course, is going to is going to get the notice of Mrs. Hillary Clinton. Not that Elizabeth Warren has any real shot of dethroning Hillary as a nominee. I'm not going to say that. I don't really believe that. But Hillary does have to make sure that she's able to get those supporters to come over to her side once she secures the nomination. So in that sense, there's going to be at least a small little skank fight between Hillary Clinton and Elizabeth Warren over the next year or so. So I think that's where that came in. This was Hillary's attempt to sound like Elizabeth Warren so that once she wins the nomination, these young heads full of mushies occupy Wall Street idiots, these kids who don't know a damn thing about reality, who fell for that Elizabeth Warren claptrap, will feel comfortable coming over to Hillary Clinton's side. She won't be the scary monster of old school politics that they think she is, and that in reality, she is. So understanding that that's got to be Eliz that's got to be Hillary Clinton's motivation for sounding downright Fidel Castro on that statement, and knowing that she did it because there are certain people out there, there are young people especially who would buy into that claptrap. How do we counter that? How do we educate people that what Eli what, what the Hillary Clinton said? And I almost called her Elizabeth Warren because she said something just almost exactly like what Elizabeth Warren says all the time. How is it that we can tell those people and illustrate to them that these ideas are dangerous and have no place in American society? To me, I think it's pretty simple. When you hear somebody say that corporations don't 
uh, don't create jobs. Businesses don't create jobs. I think all you really have to do is ask them a simple question. Let's say that you are somebody who works at a hostess plant. And what you do all day is you, you stand on that assembly line and, and you, you bake Twinkies. That's your job. You bake Twinkies, you send them down the assembly line, and uh, that pays your salary. Ask yourself a question. If you're the guy at the hostess plant baking Twinkies, could you do that same job in your home? Now, don't just instantly answer that. Think about that. Think it through. Could you bake Twinkies in your own kitchen and do what is necessary to sell enough Twinkies to make a salary at or better what you're making at the plant? Well, no, surely you couldn't because there's no way you can make enough Twinkies in your kitchen. You'd have to find some way to package them in your kitchen. You'd have to find some way of distributing them, trucks and so forth. You'd have to find some way of advertising them. You'd have to get in touch with the grocery stores and sell them. You gotta do all that in order to make the money that you're being paid. So in other words, you couldn't create that job. It takes someone like a hostess in this example, a factory in this example, a, a business, a corporation, to be able to create what we call the economy of scale that would make your job worth the salary. You couldn't do that. Think about it. Who invests in the factories? Who buys the trucks? Who purchases the systems and technology to fulfill all the things the American people want? You wouldn't be able to do that on your own. And even if you put together a couple of people, a few people to pitch in the resources, you still would unlikely be able to do it on such a level that you could make a profit out of it, make a true living out of it. That's risk. And that risk is what those corporations and those businesses take up. You see, when you hear the Hillary Clintons and the Elizabeth Warrens and the Karl Marxes of the world discuss business, discuss corporations, they often talk of them as though they are a little more than an inconvenient middleman in the process of business, but they are anything but. Because it's businesses and corporations that take on the risk that is necessary to produce the goods and services that the people want and that in turn provide the jobs that people need. And let's not forget, if you go in, if you're a factory worker, you go into your factory and you spend 40 hours, make, making, 40 hours a week making whatever it is you make, you're going to get paid for 40 hours a week, whether that company sells anything or not. But those people that invested in the factory, invested in, in the equipment, invested in the raw materials, invested in the distribution and the advertising and all of those things, all those stockholders and, and, and so forth, all those people, they don't get paid until the profit's actually turned. Yeah, it's all their risk. So maybe we should give the businesses and the corporations a little bit more credit, hell, a lot more credit for what they do to keep a lot of us employed. Now rest assured, Hillary Clinton is not going to continue making statements like this once she gets the nomination. She will do what every Clinton has done, which is to triangulate, as they say. She will try to make herself sound like the biggest ally of business that there is. She will do an about face when it comes time to run in the general election. But it's up to us, up to those of us who know what she's up to, who know what she believes, who knows what she stands for, to produce this little tape every single time we can once we get to that general election. To illustrate for the American people who she is and what kind of voters she's courting. It's our job to make her answer for this un-American and unacceptable statement. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.